you can't get a decent set of wireless earbuds under $30. At least that's what I've read on Reddit and heard so many times and it's absolute nonsense. Over the course of the last three years, I've reviewed over 100 sets of true wireless earbuds and I've tested many, many more, many which didn't even make it to the review stage. Today, I've picked out a selection of six wireless earbuds in 2023 that are giving you pretty decent performance across a lot of metrics. And as long as you're willing to make a few sacrifices, then you're still gonna be able to get yourself a decent set of TWS that will tick a lot of boxes on a budget. Let's start with a model that seems to be the darling of YouTube reviewers at the moment, the Moondrop Space Travel. If you're in the UK or the US, you can probably pick these up on Amazon, but if you're willing to wait, then you can get them from AliExpress for the bargain price of £15.32. If you're in the UK, you will have to add tax on that, but it's still an absolute steal at this price. I'm not sure where the space travel idea comes from with the MST and most of the inspiration in the design comes from one of their previous releases, the Neko Cake. One thing they have changed is a design of the charge case which is open at the top and it allows you to see the earbuds through the clear plastic design. You've got a single LED at the front that doesn't really give you a lot of information and whilst it looks nice enough it's not necessarily the most practical. You will probably find that you'll get bits of lint in the case from keeping it in your pocket. Whilst I've made it look easy here, taking the buds out isn't always as simple as it looks. Putting them back in can be problematic as well. Moondrop do offer a protective case, but at nearly nine quid, that's nearly half the price of the buds, I don't think it's worth bothering. It's available in two different color schemes, a lighter and a darker model. You can see the lighter model here, and both models have loads of space travel theming all across the buds and the case. The only thing that perhaps spoils the design is the black ear tips which look a little bit ugly both on the buds and when you actually look at them through the case. One of the things that differentiates the space travel from a lot of AirPod Pro style earbuds on the market is the twig style design where it separates the control area from the rounded bit that goes into your ear. It's not the prettiest, but it does make them really easy to adjust and get that optimal fit without accidentally triggering the touch controls. And talking about the optimal fit, I found them to be really comfortable. In terms of the touch controls, they're really responsive as well. Although do bear in mind that if you wear these with a beanie or a hood, you may notice some accidental triggers. They're non-capacitative touch controls and that is unfortunately one of the drawbacks where corners are cut to try and get that cost down. The other prevalent theme here is anime with waifu voice prompts, replacing the usual bips that you get with budget TWS. I personally don't mind them at all, but I know some people have a problem with them. The design doesn't lend itself for exercise or using in the gym and there's no IPX rating. However, I found them to be pretty stable if you need to dash for the bus or the train, something like that. And it was quite a surprise, but welcome to see that they included active noise cancellation. Where this one is let down is the active noise cancellation performance, which is quite weak. They're only using feed forward noise reduction. And we've seen that in the likes of the Soundbeats Live previously, that it's okay for taking the edge off certain sounds, but it's not gonna give you that strong active noise performance when you're in an outdoor scene, for example, and you've got a mixture of different frequency sounds, traffic sounds, people chatting to you, stuff like that. It's not gonna perform particularly well on that front. But even so, just having active noise cancellation in a budget set is a bonus and it performs reasonably well here. In terms of the audio, the tuning is like many earbuds on the market today, inspired by the Harman curve. The default reference preset gives you a moderately boosted bass response, and the peak between two and three K means that your mid range is quite forward. The trebles are a little more on the relaxed side, and this makes for an overall well-balanced sound signature, although vocals can seem a little shouty at times. There's a bit of air to the sound, and this gives the impression of a more open sound stage, although there's not a great deal of depth the imaging isn't fantastic, although again, bear in mind the price at £15, you're not going to get a super analytical, hyper detailed set of Bluetooth earbuds. But for the price, it's a very solid performance. You've also got a couple of very respectable presets 
bass head isn't quite as it sounds it's probably still not going to satisfy bass heads it makes the sound a little warmer but you will notice a little bit of mid-range bleed that doesn't really bother me too much and i tend to use this preset the most monitor negates the bass and it does bring the vocals forward a little bit and enhances the treble but i found this preset lacked a bit of excitement and it's nice that at this price moondrop included an app moondrop link you probably won't find it in the play store i don't remember how i managed to get hold of it in the end but it did take a while it doesn't really give you a great deal of functionality it allows you to choose one of those other presets and you can also customize controls and it does give you quite granular control although you're not able to assign volume up and down to any of those gestures which is a little bit of a disappointment i didn't find the space travel to be particularly great on calls this is how they sound in a very quiet room where you've got no ambient sounds going on around you and they're okay in this kind of scenario but when you listen back to them how they perform in a busy outdoor and a busy indoor you'll find that this is possibly the achilles heel and this time around the session of the moon drop space travel in a busy indoor environment we're in a coffee shop here where you've got various different environmental sounds trying to integrate your calls there's people chatting around us and sounds of the whistles. It, it's commensurate with what you can expect when you're in a busy environment and you make or take an important call. So I hope it's a good barometer for what you can expect from the only drop space travel. And this time around we're testing the space travel in a busy outdoor environment. We're trying to replicate what they would sound like if you need to make or take an important call on the daily commute, whether you're walking, into school, college, the office, the train station, etc. The kind of sounds you've got here that will infiltrate your call are a little bit of wind noise, birds chirping in the background, and lots of traffic. Battery life is on the short side though, at under four hours with ANC on, and voice calls don't perform particularly well either, so do bear these things in mind. So overall, there's a lot to like about the Moondrop space travel, especially if you favour a smooth sound signature and a natural timbre. It isn't quite the game changer that some reviewers have said it is, but it's still a very good choice, especially at this price. Next up, it's the Clear from Soundpeats, which haven't actually been released yet, but I'm reliably informed you will be able to pick these up for $30. Soundpeats have gone all in with this semi-transparent theme on the case and the buds. They've included dual mics and ENC to improve your voice calls and 12mm dynamic drivers. Bluetooth 5.3 connectivity, low latency courtesy of the inbuilt gaming mode, and this is another model which has app support. They're available in four color schemes, and thankfully I managed to get an early sneak preview of the white. And I have to say, it does live up to all expectations in the flesh. Now, I've read comments on loads of reviews before, and there's a big market for people who want earbuds that look a little bit different to the norm, and you're definitely getting that here. The case is really nice to use, flipping open at the front. It's lightweight, it's portable, it has a friction hinge, and it has a traffic light LED to denote charge at the front. The design is similar to Soundpeat's other stem-based offerings. The shallow nozzle means that they're non-invasive and super comfortable and they're IPX4 water and sweat resistant, so you've got no issues using them out and about if you get caught in a splash of rain, etc. And this combined with decent stability means you could also use them in the gym. I used them here on the treadmill without any issues and also gave them a shot for weights and resistance training and they performed admirably well. The Clear have environmental noise reduction and four mics to improve your voice calls. This is how they sound in absolute silence indoors. You're going to hear in a moment how they sound in a busy outdoor and a busy indoor environment. And this time we're testing the sound piece clear in a busy indoor environment. And it really is quite busy. I've just noticed how noisy it is in the background here because I just previously tested the Air 4 Pro, which has got quite strong active noise cancellation. These don't. And you've got kind of engulfing of different sounds from innocent chatter, lots of conversations, it's really busy in here. And also the sounds of the, the clanging of the baristas uh, and the staff here making snacks and uh, probably cooking as you can see in the background as well. And again, we're testing the sound piece clear. I'm in a little bit of a wind trap here. I've been waiting for a gust of wind to come through. We finally have one. So this is how you can expect the clear to perform 
in that kind of outdoor environment where you're maybe walking to the train station, walking to school, walking to college, something like that, and you're having to cope with the wind trying to scupper your voice call. The Clear is a new option from Soundpeats. It shows that new matured house sound where they've tweaked that Soundpeats classic sound signature to give you slightly more sparkly highs and less emphasis on the lower frequencies. Although as you saw from the frequency response measurements on my Air 4 Pro review, it is boosted over and above what you're getting there. The sub bass in particular has a bit more slam to it and you can see where Soundpeats have deliberately tuned these buds to avoid that mid bass bleed which characterised some of their earlier releases. If you're a bass head and you're not too bothered about the texture and the quality of bass then you'll much prefer these over the Moondrop Space Travel. Vocals like on the MST are more forward. They can be slightly less shouty than the MST due to the overall sound balance but they're also less warm sounding. The trebles aren't quite as relax so if you like house music and techno where you've got a kick drum it translates well to this music style. The staging and imaging aren't as accurate as on the MST and the tone isn't as natural but if you're looking for something more energetic and you're not too bothered about instrument placement etc then this might fit the bill. You've also got very basic support from the Soundpeats app where you're able to do things like update the firmware, see how much battery life is remaining in the buds toggle gaming mode and touch controls on and off and you've also got eight different presets as well as a 10 band custom EQ. Because this model doesn't have active noise cancellation it's one of those Soundbeats models that has got full control over everything, single taps for volume control, holding the buds down for a couple of seconds left or right will cycle through your tracks as well. The controls are less prone to accidental touches than the Moondrop and some of the other buds we're showing here. And the only real drawbacks are, like most Soundbeats releases, that there's no quick charge and you don't have the ability to customise your controls. Call quality is great, they look good and they're available in lots of different colours as well. You're getting good battery life. Overall, it's a very good performance and as long as you're not looking for active noise cancellation, then you've got yourself a cracking choice that is widely available, whereas some of the other options aren't. You'll be able to get the Soundpeats through Amazon quite easily and not have to rely on the likes of AliExpress where you've got perhaps long shipment times and maybe not quite the level of support that you'll get with Amazon. My expectations for the M2S from Basius weren't especially high because I've reviewed quite a few of their TWS in the past and didn't really like them at all. The M2S cost me around £21 and if you look at their feature set it is actually quite impressive. They've got multi-point connectivity, app support, customizable controls, customizable levels of ANC, customizable EQ, they've got low latency mode and they've also got some kind of in-ear detection. They're a great looking set of earbuds that remind me a lot of the Huawei FreeBuds Pro series although they fit much better in your ear. They're super stable and super comfortable and this optimized fit augments active noise cancellation which is advertised as up to 48 dB and indeed I did find that this was one of the strongest sets which I've tested below $30. I love the case design as well. Okay it's a complete rip off of the Xiaomi Buds 4 Pro but in terms of usability it's one of the best which I've used again around this price and maybe this is where Soundbeats got the inspiration for their clear because they operate in a very similar way too. In terms of the audio performance I certainly don't think it's as good as the Moondrop Space Travel, the QCY HT05 or the Soundbeats clear for that matter. It's a little warmer and the bass is punchier than the other two models. The more recessed mid-range means on some tracks the instrumentation can sound a little bit thin and whilst vocals are very much front and centre other instruments in the treble range aren't particularly clear and there's not a great deal of detail. Another minor quibble with the sound is that it isn't especially loud. The maximum volume is okay if you're in a quiet environment but if you've got a lot of ambient sound even with the strong ANC that volume is probably going to be a little bit too quiet for you. This is how the Basius M2S sound in an indoor environment where you've got absolutely no environmental noise whatsoever. In a moment, we'll have a listen to how they perform in a busy indoor and external environment. Okay, so we're testing the Facebook M2S, this time in a busy indoor environment in a coffee shop, where you've got a mixture of different sounds going on, the baristas making coffees, um, the clanging of the tableware, you've got conversations going on around you, and 
We've also got some background music too. So a combination of things that you might be or maybe get in the way of your voice or when you're in this kind of environment. Okay, next up we are testing the Basius M2S in an outdoor environment. So this is how you can expect them to perform on your voice notes and your voice calls when you're on the daily commute, when you walk into college, to work, to the train station, to school, etc. And you're fighting with the elements a little bit, so you've got the wind coming through, you've got the sound of traffic coming past you, various different vehicles. This is kind of commensurate with what you can expect and how you can expect these earbuds to perform on your calls. As I said before, the M2S does have app support, but this is where you start to see some of the holes in the product and you realize that all those features, including app support, might be a little bit of a curse as well as a gift. And before I go into detail on the features, this is one of those apps which you have to have uh, registration and login for. A personal bugbear, I really don't like having to do that. From the main screen, you've got all your options here as well as being able to see your battery level. First, let's have a look at spatial acoustics. You've got three different modes, normal music and cinema. I mean, it's cute that they included it, but I'm not gonna try and convince you that any of these modes do anything other than make the audio sound worse because that's exactly what they do. Ambient sound allows you to toggle between normal mode, transparency mode, and then a number of different noise reduction modes as well. Again, I didn't really feel like any of these different modes really did anything. And I'm pretty sure the dial, which goes from zero to 10, doesn't work. And when you change it, it absolutely does not change the level of active noise cancellation. Thankfully, the ANC on this model is strong, although the transparency mode isn't particularly clear. Some of these features, I feel like they've included them just so they can say that they've included them in the marketing material whether they actually bring any tangible benefit to the product is pretty questionable. EQ mode gives you 12 different presets and they actually aren't that bad. Mega bass keeps that V shape and bumps up the sub bass, but not ridiculously so. Jazz lifts the mid range and mid bass a little. The only really unusable one is original, steer clear of that. You've also got the ability to set your own custom EQ from scratch. What would have been nice here is to have the ability to be able to take one of the presets and then tweak it from there like you can with some products. Maybe this is something that Basius can look to add in the future. The custom controls are a nice addition. As we saw earlier, Soundpeaks doesn't have this, so that's a feather in the cap for Basius. Although you don't have a great deal of control, you can't, for example, set volume control to any of the different combinations, and it's only really double tap and long press that you've got any control over. There's also a Find My Buds mode, although by the looks of things, they seem to think I'm somewhere near a petrol station in the middle of the Arabian Sea. That's probably because it will be a cold day in hell before I give location <laughs> permissions to some random Chinese TWS app. Finally, you've got the toggles for in-ear detection, which I found to be a little bit ropey to say the least. It kind of works when it wants to work, but the low latency mode is good and latency in general on this model is pretty good overall. The M2S from Basius were a real surprise, I have to say, because I've tested quite a few Basius buds in the past and I didn't really like any of them. The audio performance was a bit ropey. And even here, it isn't perfect. You're probably gonna need to dive into the EQ settings to maybe take some of the edge out of that mid bass to give you a clearer sound but the active noise cancellation performance is astonishing. It's probably the pick of the bunch. And the comfort is excellent as well. The way that they've designed the ergonomics takes a little bit from the Huawei FreeBuds Pro and a little bit from the Xiaomi Buds 4 Pro, and it gives you something at the end of it that is comfortable for prolonged use, and it stays in your ears even when you're doing exercising or when you've got to make a dash for the train or the bus or something like that. You get around four hours battery life, which is below average really, even with ANC. I probably wouldn't choose these unless you're looking for something comfortable that has really strong ANC, and that's pretty much your only prerequisite. The Buds Air 3S from Realme were one of my favorites throughout 2023. If you're specifically looking for multi-point on a budget and your budget is $30, then look no further. They use a single 11 mil liquid silicone triple titanium base driver, and these are definitely an earbud for bass heads. The 4 mic ENC is among the very best at this price point and you get support from the very polished Realme app. However, there's no active noise cancellation on this model. 
and you might find them difficult to pick up from your usual sources unless you're in India. For those of us in the UK, Europe and the US, you'll probably have to turn to AliExpress. The store I got them from has rather selfishly whacked the price up, but you can pick them up for between 21 and 24 pounds, depending on the store. And of course, 11.11 is coming up, so I'm sure very soon you'll be able to pick it up for even cheaper than that. The design of the buds is quite unique. It's got a shiny finish on the outside, which can be a little bit of a fingerprint magnet. And it's got this kind of fin at the top. It's got quite a shallow insertion, and I think the fin is designed to give you a little bit more stability. But the reality, at least for me, is that it's only really semi-useful and it's more there for decorative purposes because the fin is quite short so it doesn't reach to the top of the area of your conker where it can get any kind of traction. Even so, I did find them reasonably stable and they are IPX5 so you can use them outdoors. The case is a little bit cheap feeling and that dare to leap slogan on the inside might not be for everyone but battery life is really good i got well over six hours from a single charge and that equates to around 26 hours with the case in terms of the tuning well i said these are for base heads and the graph definitely doesn't lie there's a hefty amount of rumble to the sub bass so if you like that subwoofer style sound then these are probably the pick of the bunch for you it's a classic consumer v-shape so there's not a great deal of musicality although you have got a little bit more presence and more sharpness and definition to your percussion your clashes and your cymbals certainly compared with something like the basius m2s you've also got three additional eq preset options within the realme app serenade as it sounds puts more emphasis on vocals by reducing that sub bass and elevating the upper mids a little Pure bass increases that mid-range dip even further. Deep bass lifts the mid-range and the lower mids, but it skews the treble downwards. And whilst these presets might sound like an absolute nightmare, especially given it's a budget bud, I think the best thing that I can say in support of Realme's tunings here is that the drivers cope with it absolutely fine. To say it isn't my preferred tuning would be an understatement, but to their credit, there's not a huge amount of detectable distortion, even on higher volumes, and I'd say they still sound a little bit better than something like the Earfun Air Pro 3, which are often talked about as bass head earbuds. But for me, the earphone sound colored and disattached and it isn't as engaging as a sound as you get in from this much cheaper offering from Realme. In terms of features, you get Google Fast Pair or Fast Connect or whatever they call it. It means that connection is a little bit more painless. And also you can see how much battery is remaining in the left and right buds respectively. You've also got a find your device option. Realme Connect, their app, is a classic example of how TWS apps should be done. On the main page, everything is crystal clear. You can see your different presets and select them easily. You've got the option to customize the EQ as well to your own preferences. It's only a six band graphic EQ, but it's still better than nothing. And you're able to save various different options as your own personal presets. If the volume is quiet, which is often the case on Android devices, then you've got a toggle here to enhance it. And again, I didn't really notice too much distortion when this was selected, when perhaps it shouldn't have been. You've also got quite a bit of customization with respect to the controls, although you can't adjust single tap. I think they've left it this way deliberately to avoid accidental touches. You also got the ability to toggle game mode within the app and turn multipoint on and off as well. That will help you conserve a little bit of battery if you're not using it. All in all, a simple and elegant app experience. When it comes to call quality, I think the Realme Buds Air 3S is one of the best around at this price, but I'll let you be the judge of it. This is how they sound with no ambient noise going on around you indoors. But once again, give you a few examples in a busy indoor and a busy outdoor scene. The Realme Buds Air 3S are another of my budget picks for 2023. You pick them up for around $30, which is an absolute bargain when you consider that the core quality, certainly outdoors, perform really well in my initial test. I haven't put them through a stringent test like this one in the coffee shop environment yet. So I'm interested to see how they perform in terms of being able to separate your voice from those heavy environmental sounds which you're going on, not going on around you. With Realme's presence predominantly being in India, it was a little bit difficult to get hold of the Buds Air 3S, but they also fall into that budget category of being around the 
to 30 pounds, euros, or dollars mark. There's no fancy terminology about the call quality on the marketing paraphernalia that Realme gave with this release. However, if I remember rightly, they performed pretty well at reducing environmental sounds. So I'm looking forward to seeing and hearing how they compare to some of their competitors. Comfort is pretty good. Again, if you switch the tips out, then you can get even better performance. And they're quite discreet as well. So if you're looking for something that doesn't stick out too far from your ears or you don't like a stem, but you still want solid mic performance, as we heard, the Buds Air 3S are excellent, especially in busy indoor scenes, then they might be the right option for you. This is the final in-ear selection and I've saved the best till last, the QCY HT05 Mellow Buds. This one looks a bit more old fashioned with its slightly longer stem and the stock tips aren't particularly great for comfort. But as soon as I switch the tips out for these medical grade latex Fayula tips, which again you can get from AliExpress, I noticed an immeasurable improvement. They're quite generic looking, but looks really are deceiving here because the performance in terms of the audio, the active noise cancellation, level of customization in the app and call quality are all very good for the price. The only blot on the copy, but really is the non-capacitive touch control, same as the Moondrop, where if you're wearing a beanie or a hood, they can sometimes accidentally trigger. Difference here is you've got much more granularity in terms of the customization of those controls in the QCY app. And whilst the app itself isn't the most enjoyable experience, it can sometimes be a bit glitchy and it does feel a bit beta, it does give you lots of control. The ANC and transparency are better than the Moondrop, they're not quite as good as the Basius, and they fall a bit short of something like the Soundpeats Air 4 Pro if you're spending a little bit more. It's not adaptive like the Soundpeats, but you've got lots of customization options, including six different levels for noisy, commuting, and indoor. There's also a hidden wind noise reduction option. I didn't really notice too much of a difference here. You've got similar levels of granularity over the transparency mode, and you've also got a channel balance option. So if you do find that one bud is a little bit quieter than the other, then you can adjust this accordingly as well. A very useful feature that enhances the longevity of the device. You've also got a 10 band custom equalizer and a bunch of different presets. And you can save those as my sound effects. You see here that I've got my own neutral and V-shaped sound signatures. Happy to share those EQ presets if anybody is interested. As I mentioned previously, you've got full control over your different touch control options, including single touch, double touch, and triple touch. Sleeping mode allows you to turn the touch controls off, although their slightly bulky profile means they're probably not suitable for side sleepers. You can also toggle gaming mode here, and the latency is actually pretty good on this model. And this is another one that has the Find My Headset feature. And the sound well and truly punches above its weight. Like all the options here, there's no high-res codecs, it's using AAC, and it's using a single 10mm LCP dynamic driver, but it's QCY's best tuned bud by some distance. They've managed to get the balance spot on between the bass, the mid bass, the upper mids and the trebles. And you're left with a very smooth but also very engaging sound that out of the box beats a lot of the sub $100 earbuds that I've reviewed over the course of the last couple of years. The staging isn't huge but it's still got better depth than pretty much every other option here and the imaging is better too. Both this and the MST are tuned with the Harman target in mind although I like the punchier bass out of the box on the HT05. Feel like the vocals are better done, a little bit less shouty, and there's a bit more shimmer to the trebles as well that translates really well to tracks with percussion, house music, techno. If you're into those sorts of styles, I think you'll definitely prefer the QCY. And you'll prefer them for longevity as well. The battery life is much better. I got around five and a half hours just over single use and then you've got three to four additional charges too. So pretty good performance, even compared to some of the more expensive options on the market. For voice calls, I think the HT05 are pretty respectable as well. This is how they sound in an indoor environment where you've got absolutely no environmental noise. The QCY HT05 Mellow Buds are one of my favorite budget earbuds for 2023. 
Cool quality seems to be pretty decent when I did the review a few months ago. We're looking to see how well that noise reduction performs and if your voice comes through clearly on your call. Despite also being at the lower end of the budget range, the QCY HT05 Mellow Buds have six microphones in total across the two earbuds designed to improve that environmental noise cancellation even further. In the initial tests, they actually performed pretty well in outdoor environments, certainly reducing some of those low rumbling ambient sounds. So I'm looking forward to hearing how they compare this time around. So as you heard there, a bit of an anomaly. They seem to perform better on indoor calls than outdoor calls, where that noise reduction algorithm just kicked in a little bit too hard and your voice did go a little bit muffled. On other external calls, I didn't necessarily have the same sorts of problems. So perhaps it's just a little bit of inconsistency that you can probably expect when you're spending under $30 on a set of TWS. Because the HT05 really do, as I said, punch above their weight you're getting very good performance across each of those key metrics. Now HT05 is my pick of these $30 options because you're just getting everything in the package. You've got excellent sound, good active noise cancellation, loads of options to tweak the active noise cancellation as well. You've got full control over your controls, fully customizable through the app and the EQ of course as well, which you can tweak your sound to improve it even further. And all of these things save to the bud rather than going through the app. The only drawbacks, I didn't really find the comfort that great, but using those Faula ear tip solves the problem. You still get decent active noise cancellation performance as well as enhancing that comfort immensely. And the final one on the list is for the Semi In Ear Brigade. It's one that went under the radar in terms of its release the Enco Air 3 from Oppo. It's another one that doesn't seem to have had a global release yet. If you look at the box, it's quite shabby. And also most of the text is in Chinese with only a few English translations here and there. Again, because we're just before 11.11, some of the prices have been hiked up a little bit to make the discounts look bigger. It's around 25 pounds at the moment, but I paid around 21.22. The unboxing, the packaging is quite lackluster. You don't even get a USB charge cable with this one. You're getting quite a basic charge case. Again, it's another semi-transparent one, and it's another one that flips open at the front. And this is one of the few cases that we've gone through in this list that gives you quick charge. So you get an additional two hours worth of playtime from just 10 minutes plugged in. And the Enco Air 3 has quite a lot to offer in terms of the ergonomics, the aesthetics, and the usability. They're IP54 dust and water resistant, so they're absolutely fine for wearing outdoors. The dewdrop style design makes it a little bit different to the normal monochromatic earbuds, which we've seen of this kind of semi in-ear form factor. And whilst I wouldn't say that they're the most stable fitting semi in earbuds that I've tried, they did at least pass the shake test for me. I don't think the fit is quite as stable as some of the more modern designs, those based on the Apple AirPod Gen 3, but it's still pretty good. But this way I was able to dash for the bus with them. And whilst they didn't fall out, you might need to just give them the occasional little readjustment. From a design perspective, you're not really doing a great deal different to all the other semi in earbuds on the market today. Although one of my little bugbears is that the driver output is perpendicular rather than angling downwards, which we've seen with some of these semi in earbuds on the market that enhances stability so perhaps they could have been even more secure and from an audio perspective i think they're one of the better sounding budget semi in ear offerings despite the trebles tailing off from around 6k onwards it's a bright clean sounding tws with forward vocals plenty of bass given the form factor constraints the sound stage is reasonably wide as well with moderate depth and clarity and instrument separation is quite reasonable for the money too the enco air 3 do pretty well for calls as well this is how they sound when you've got no ambient noise going on around you. And once again, they'll take you through two separate scenarios so you can judge how they perform in the real world. This time it's the busy coffee shop test for the Oppo Enco Air 3. So this is what you can expect your voice to sound like at the other end of the line when you're in a coffee shop or in a busy office and you're trying to make or take a call in the scenario. This is a budget release from Oppo and this is the first time I've actually tested them outdoors. I've only received them over the last couple of weeks. 
So I'm, again, really interested to hear how they perform in comparison to com some of the competitors. The Enco Air 3 are supported by Oppo's Hey Melody app. This is another example of a simple but effective TWS app. You've got no custom EQ, but you've got three individual presets, all of which are pretty good. They're all usable, certainly. And Oppo Alive Audio, their answer to spatial audio, is also surprisingly usable for a budget bud. I've tried it out on some more expensive ones and it's been worse than this, so kudos to Oppo for including it and for making a decent fist of it. Again, the latency on this model is pretty good, but you've got the ability to toggle gaming mode in the app. You've also got the ability to toggle multi-point connectivity and you can actually see the connected devices within the app, which is definitely a big selling point. Again, there's a Find My Earbuds feature here, and you've got some ability to customize your touch controls. It does have some limitations. For example, you don't really have much control over single tap other than turning it off. And you can also only add volume control to touch and hold. So some limitations, but still reasonably useful. Even at the time of recording this in November 23, I was still getting firmware updates, which you can apply through the app as well. Battery life is probably the only drawback with this model, although it is a common constraint with semi-in earbuds. I got between four and five hours, depending on whether you're using multi-point and making a lot of calls or not. So as I said, it's still respectable as far as semi-in earbuds go, but if you're used to those long in-ear battery lives, like the Soundcore Space A40, for example, and the Soundbeats Sonic, well, it's going to fall a little way short of your expectations. The S3 is a really nice option for semi-in ear enthusiasts who maybe don't like the invasive feel of silicone tips in their ears. The only problem I had was the stability. It's okay, but they could have angled those nozzles down a little bit more and that would have improved it immensely. Even so, as long as you've got small ears, I reckon these will be the ideal bud for you especially if you're looking for features that you don't normally see at this kind of price point, such as multi-point and spatial audio. So to summarize, loads of good options under that $30 mark, and there were plenty that didn't make the list that are equally good as well. You've got the likes of the A20i and P20i from Soundcore, which didn't make the list because I didn't necessarily like the sound as much as some of these options, or maybe they didn't offer certain features which I was looking for. And quite a few of the other QCY releases, such as the HT07, are actually pretty good. You're getting stuff like strong active noise cancellation performance, but they didn't make the list, maybe because the sound wasn't quite as good as a few of the alternatives. Of the list that I gave you, my favourite, as I said, is the HT05 Mellow Buds, purely for the fact that they tick pretty much every box. The Moondrop Space Travel as well, a really great choice. Great comfort, excellent sound with different EQ modes, but the absence of a strong hybrid active noise cancellation and the weak performance on voice calls mean that they might not necessarily be for everyone. But hopefully you found something which suits you. And if you enjoy the format of the review, please do let me know. If you're looking for more comparisons or collections like this, I'd love to hear from you. Do give the video a like if you found it useful and consider subscribing if you haven't already. For now, it's Reagan Cipher, signing off.